So let's look first at time series regression. This is the a technique used by Fama and French in the multi-factor anomalies paper, which we've looked at. Uh, so it might be familiar with that. Here's what we do. Assumption one, the factor has to be an excess return itself. It's a traded portfolio, as in the case for the capital asset pricing model. As a result, the price of risk is the mean of the factor, at least in model or population. So those two things are linked together. So what do we do? We simply run the return on the factor. Uh, that's for each asset I, you run this over time, hence a time series regression. But we're not here really to understand that. We're here to understand the cross-section. We're here to understand how expected returns uh, relate to betas. And in the time series technique, you just stop there because you've got everything you know. You take the average of that equation, expected returns are alpha plus beta, the mean of the factor, and we use the mean of the factor to estimate the factor risk premium. So what you do here is you only run that, as we saw with Fama French, and then in your head you have to understand that this is the whole point. In your head, or, or on graphs if you like making graphs, the point is to understand this cross-sectional relationship, how average returns line up with betas. And what we're doing here is we're estimating the slope of that line by making it run through the risk-free rate and the factor uh, identically. The mean of the factor is the factor risk premium lambda, the slope of that line. So that's how we do it. We make that, run that regression, and then find the implied cross-sectional relationship. Now, put your econometrician hat on. What do we need? Estimates standard errors, and the test statistic. The estimates, well, that's just ordinary least squares. So ordinary least squares estimates of alpha and beta, and the factor risk premium is just the sample mean of the factor. So getting the estimates is easy. Standard errors. Well, standard errors of OLS estimates of alpha and beta, and the standard error of the mean, which we started this whole section off with, those are all easy. There's two approaches. There's the IID normal standard formulas from the textbook, or we learned how to do GMM approach to ordinary least squares regression. I won't even write down the formulas because you know how to do them. The test is a little bit trickier. We're looking for a test that all the alphas are jointly equal to zero. Now these are n different regressions and standard econometrics books don't have the joint distribution of the intercepts of n different regressions. But finance people ha have worked that out. That's what we're looking for. Let, let's let alpha hat be the vector of the intercepts of each of the n different regressions, which are the error terms of each of the n implied uh, of the cross-sectional relationship. So this vector of error terms of the cross-section, which is the vector of intercepts in the time series, that's a vector times covariance inverse times that vector. That sort of thing has a chi-squared distribution asymptotically or an F distribution in small samples and we just have to work out what that covariance matrix is, and then we have a test statistic for are the alphas jointly equal to zero. So how do we make a test statistic like that? Well, the standard IID normal approach, uh, it took some working out to do, but uh, um, it's, it's not hard to work out what the joint distribution of the intercepts of n different regressions is. This is the famous uh, GRS, or Gibbons, Ross, and Schenken, test for Gibbons, Ross, and Schenken, who, who invented it. The crucial part is, is look over here. We've got the vector of n alphas uh, there, and we're using the residual covariance matrix uh, to weight them. That turns out to be the covariance matrix of the alphas with all these constants out in front. So it's of that form, alpha prime covariance inverse alpha, and it has a, a finite sample F distribution if the errors are ID and normal. This is a problem like, like many econometric problems, which is very easy if you just stuff it into GMM. Again, the problem is finding the joint distribution of the intercepts of n different regressions. How do you do that? Well, we just stack up the moment conditions that define n different regressions at the same time. Those moment conditions are that the mean of the residuals is zero, and the residuals are uncorrelated with the right-hand variables. Now, there's n of those, and n of those, but that's no problem. N residuals and residuals uncorrelated with right-hand variables. So those are just uh, two n moment conditions. Throw, it's exactly identified. Throw GMM at it. Again, the formulas are in the notes in the textbook, so no need to put them on the board. And that gives you what you're looking for. The standard errors of alpha, standard errors of beta, and the covariance matrix of the alpha, which you can use to form a chi-squared uh, matrix. 
uh, test, now allowing for autocorrelation, conditional heteroscedasticity, all the things that the standard formula doesn't. Or if you really want uh, exact finite sample distributions, these days, Monte Carlo or bootstrap it. We don't, we don't have to use IID normal assumptions or GMM asymptotics. If you really want finite sample distributions, it's good at least to follow up with a bootstrap. So there we are, the time series method, its estimates, standard error, and how to compute its test statistic. Thank you.